So just building the oddball coupling guard there. Uh, as you can see, I bent uh, two 90 degree bends on it there, and uh, then uh, it won't fit in the vise anymore to bend the, the center one. So I got my two uh, bend angles out there. I guess if I was real smart, I'd uh, drill a hole through them and uh, just uh, put a bolt through. But I use a C-clamp to uh, secure them because when you clamp the vise together, it uh, spreads this end out. So you got to hold it back together. And, and uh, this piece here, it's fairly thick steel. It's at least a sixteenth inch thick. But uh, I can try it here. So you get a you get a bend something like that, and then uh, get out the the big swatterizer there and uh, pound it down. Make some loud noise here. Then just finish bend it by hand, so you get to get it the way you want it to look. But uh, yeah, these uh, well, I guess they're inch and a half uh, angles there, three sixteenths thick or so. But I find uh, things like these come in handy for bending uh, anything that won't won't is too big to fit in your vise. So uh, lighter the sheet metal, of course, the easier it is. But this stuff's uh, getting towards the limit there of uh, what I can bend by hand or by hammer or uh, and the longer it is too the harder it is uh, you know if it was inch wide or something you could bend 3 sixteenths inch no problem but anyway just thought I'd show you there my uh, homemade kind of break there for bending uh, steel I think I've shown it before but uh, maybe not in operation so but I had to had to use it on this uh, special coupling guard here I wanted it to be thick because I'm going to be standing right, right in front of it. So if something comes, comes out, it's going to hit me unless I have this guard in place. So we want to try to be safe with these things. So okay, so I'm getting down to the nitty gritty on the uh, electrical system of this. Uh, Got the distributor uh, somewhat timed there and uh, the rotor phased with it and all that. Um, have to rig up some type of a coil mount to the frame. Uh, do that. I got the distributor uh, ground wire uh, coming to the negative and then positive terminal leading to my click switch there and then just a uh, terminal to connect to the power source. Um, right now I'm working on a, a ground wire uh, be from the negative battery uh, terminal. I'm going to lead it right back to the same place I've got the uh, distributor grounded. Have a, have a distributor has its own ground wire here. I don't, I don't trust my uh, distributor mount to ground it uh, since it's been painted and all that. So, so I want an actual uh, ground wire. But uh, anyway, I'm uh, one terminal short here uh, to connect the, the wire to the frame. So I'm going to make. Uh, a wire end terminal here out of uh, copper so that's what the next part of the video will be so here I just have some uh, scrap uh, copper that I have lying around here uh, this is a piece of half inch pipe that uh, has been slit and this is just a chunk of a uh, three-quarter inch copper 45 degree or something it's off the original uh, four cylinder uh, Briggs uh, intake manifold so I'm just going to take this and pound it flat, then I'm going to drill a, uh, a quarter inch or slightly bigger hole in it there, and then solder my uh, the opposite end of my uh, ground wire to it. Now you might say, well you're just being cheap, you drive to the automotive store and uh, get, the, get the part you need. Well, that's true, I could do that, but uh, I find when I make them, I can make them the size that the size that I want. And uh, sometimes for cars, um, you just need it physically larger than the ones that you can buy. And uh, th this way, they're they're copper; they're not aluminum or anything, and uh, they don't seem to corrode too bad. And I find a three-quarter inch pipe seems to work the best. When you unravel it, you get a, a pretty good chunk of copper, so uh, uh, you can work with that uh, pretty easy.
so anyway just my uh, just my way of making something that I, I could buy but uh, I find I get a better product when I make them now I don't do it all the time you know I use uh, uh, crimp connectors all the time but just uh, where I connect to the uh, battery or a, a large uh, terminal seems to be uh, work better when I make them myself Jerry I'm uh, part way through construction I've got my uh, quarter inch plus uh, hole drilled in it there and I've uh, nipped the corners off and put a little uh, slot in it there for the wire to sit in um, I'll put it in there and then uh, wrap wrap this around it you can uh, make them nice and pretty looking if you want but this one's just kind of a quick and dirty one and there's the finished product there not the prettiest but fully functional Okay, so I have the entire ignition system installed now. The cylinder heads are tightened down, spark plugs are torqued. Um, all the spark plug wires are run there. You can see my uh, butchered up coil mount there. Seemed to be the simplest way to do it. Um, power wires running there. You can see I'm using a uh, non automatic type battery charger as the power source for the ignition. Chain running through the chain guard there. So she's tested the spark. Make sure that it's working right and that it's connected to all the correct cylinders and some of the wires are a bit long but I uh, I'll electrical tape them to different things to make sure they're not going to get hung up on anything or maybe short out on something. So mainly just to have to do the fuel system now. <laughs> 